Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Greetings and welcome to this service of even in prayer on the Wednesday in Holy Week. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart. Uh, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which you ought to have done, and we have done those things which you ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises, declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and have given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and are unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that at the, the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And the Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord, 
and my spirit have rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth, O generation shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and have exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray, Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endure thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And the first collect is taken from the Sunday next before Easter. Almighty and everlasting God, who of thy tender love towards mankind has sent thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the second collect, O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. And the third collect. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. A prayer for the Queen's Majesty. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty King of kings, 
Lord of Lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth. Most heartily we beseech thee, with thy favour to behold our most gracious Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way, and you are plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant her in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen her, that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies. And finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the royal family. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Charles, Prince of Wales, and all the royal family. Endure them with thy Holy Spirit. Enrich them with thy heavenly grace. Prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the clergy and people. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone workest great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the helpful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual due of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ, Amen. A prayer of St. Christostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our com common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, everlasting life everlasting. Amen. And we're going to do the, read the epistle for Wednesday in Holy Week. I'll just find it. Here we are, and it is taken from Heb the epistle of Paul to the Hebrews, chapter 9 and verses 16 to the end. Where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator, for a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise it is no strength at all, whilst the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament has dictated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water, and scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkle both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament, which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, and almost all things by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission, it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, 
which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then he must often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world have he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Here ends the reading of the epistle. And the gospel is taken from that according to St. Luke, chapter 22, to the end. How the Feast of Unleavened Bread now drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way, and, and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad, and covenanted to give him money. And he promised, and thought sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the days of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he, that is Jesus, sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover, that we may eat. And they said unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in. And ye shall say unto the goodman of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber? where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples, and he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found, as he had said unto them. And they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and brake it and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to inquire among themselves 
which of them it was that should do this thing. <coughs> me. And there was also a strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. And he told, said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. They that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. Ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth serve. For whether it is greater to be that he that sitteth at meat, or, or he that serveth, nor he that sitteth at meat, I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint you unto a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath de desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith sh fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen my brethren he said unto him, I am ready to go with thee into prison and to death. And Jesus said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrib, and shoes. Lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, But now, he that have a purse, let him take of it, and likewise his scrib, that he have no sword. Let him sell his garment, and buy, and buy one. For I say unto you, that this that is written must be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Behold, there are two swords. And he said unto them, It is enough. And he came out and, and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray, that ye enter not into temptation. And kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, thou, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow and said unto them, why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. And while he was yet uh, take, spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, 
went before him and drew near to Jesus to kiss them, kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? And when they who were about him saw what would follow, they said unto the Lord, Shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest thus far, and he touched his ear, and he healed him. When Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders who were come to him, Be ye come out against the thief with swords and staves, when I was daily with you in the temple. Ye stretch forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then took they him and led him and brought him to the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled the fire in the midst of the hole and were set down together, Peter sat among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire, and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Ma'am, I am not. And about the space of, of one hour after, Another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. And the men that behold Jesus mocked him and smote him. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy who it is that smote thee. And many other things blasphemously spake they against him. And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together and led him into their council, saying, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said unto them, I tell you, ye will not believe if I also ask you, ye will not answer me nor let me go. Hereafter the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the the power of God. And they said all, Art thou the Son of God? And he said to them, Yea, say that I am. And they said, What need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard from his own mouth. Now, that ends our evening prayer for for today. I shall be back tomorrow. At this stage, uh, I'll be taking the Holy Communion, or or also called the Mass, being Maundy Thursday, the Thursday before Easter. And the likely time will be 11 o'clock British time. But... If it's any other time, I'll just do it and you'll be able to find me on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you for being with me. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Ghost be with you now and always. Amen. (laughs) 